Star Trek The Next Generation was a show Star Trek The Next that Generation everybody was I interacted with. A show that I started watching when I was a really little kid. Can you believe it's been 30 years? Star Trek The Next Generation first Star Trek The Next Generation was my life. I really grew up with this show. My relationship to how I should conduct myself. It was the escape from reality. Welcome to Next Generation's First Generation, where Patrick Delmore and Sasha Shouties take a look back into their favorite childhood show, Star Trek The Next Generation. This is where we attempt to reconcile how we felt as children watching the show and looking back as old farts now in our late 30s, almost 40s. Guests? social commentary, and good old-fashioned shade-throwing on our favorite and least favorite episodes. Here comes Patrick and Sasha. Welcome to another episode of Next Generation's First Generation. This is a podcast where we look back at our favorite things about Star Trek, kind of see what we liked as a kid and reflected on now as adults. Uh, my name is Sasha Shouties, and with me I have the host... Patrick Delmore. Howdy, howdy. And today we have some friends with us. There is, I believe, uh, Matthew in the room. Hello. Hello. There is a Nigel in the room. Hi there. And a paging Gemlene Chowdies. Gemlene Chowdies, are you here? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. She is partially here. I'm partially here. And what? special appearance by Blow Off. Blow Off? <laughs> yeah, Matt's, Matt's playing with his aerosol here. That's kind of cool. So is that a dust-off product? <laughs> yes, it is. Ah. Are we sponsored? <laughs> oh. Try to clean we, we are not okay. sponsored. <laughs> oh. But if we were sponsored, we would we would be sponsored appropriately by a company selling compressed gases in cans. Yes. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So for today's episode, uh, we have Samaritan Snare and... If you wish, you can listen to us as you're driving down the road, walking your dog, climbing a ladder, or standing on your head. Um, whatever your method is, uh, preferred is the Netflix or DVD. And we're going to give you the countdown of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you can watch along. So, here we go. Mr. Delmore, if you could please start that countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and in game. Captain's log, stardate 42779.1. I can never get over the Captain Log sector, meme where they take the picture of the log lady from Twin Peaks uh, and superimpose uh, Patrick Stewart's face on it and he's holding the log. So they're supposed to do a survey here. This survey is not going to happen in the episode. Wesley is going to take his uh, academy exams. Hey, off ship, huh? And he's been getting credit for being on the Enterprise. I'm so confused because I thought that he already graduated from Academy. No, no he's oh. he's got his training tunic on. Oh. He did his uh, he did his entrance his entrance exam and didn't pass the psych test. Hey, okay, okay. Wait, no, he passed. He passed the psych test. He didn't pass the practical. Because he helped out Mendar, Mordok, whatever yeah, that guy's that's name right. is. That's right. Yeah, Mamadou. <laughs> oh. Oh, and here is our classic Doctor Captain argument. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna borrow what uh, Andrew and uh, Chris said about this in Star Trek Monthly Monday. So here's the problem that they've set up: is that Picard is embarrassed about Pulaski performing this operation on him, so he's gonna go somewhere else to do it. But some arbitrary Techno babble thing is going to go wrong, and Pulaski's going to have to do the operation anyway. Does that really bear any weight to anything? What? At all? Like the reason they have, she actually ends up doing no. the procedure? No, it doesn't. Huh. It's just a cool thing to throw in there. But it, this, this sets up, of course, the much, much better episode. Tapestry, mm -hmm. which also has Q in it, because this this tells the story of Picard's artificial heart, which is completely forgotten about by the time that Star Trek Nemesis happens. This is almost an origin story for Picard. Almost, yeah. Almost. I mean, we hear a little bit like he dated a woman in Paris, 
Yeah. From the Mannheim effect? Yeah. But we didn't hear much about that. <coughs> Here is Picard talking to Wesley, trying to talk himself into a carpool. Watch if Wesley said, no, take your own shuttle. <laughs> They're just flying parallel the whole way. Did, did I miss what his um, medical issue was? Uh, they, they haven't said it on the okay, show they're, yet. They're, they're dancing around it, Got and it. nobody knows. Okay. And Picard doesn't want anybody to know. Okay. Yeah, for all and, we know, it's Space Herbies. Yep. Data looks like it's Space Herbies. He's just like, what's going on? I, I don't know. Is it Space Herbies, guys? Um, yes. Anybody would have Space Herbies. It would be Riker. Yes, what is it Riker would definitely... <laughs> Captain, can I talk to you about Space Herpes? <laughs> I have some experience in this. And Why I wear a beard now? <laughs> Making sure my books have all their pages in them. I, I have a pulsar cluster sometimes when my Space Herpes comes out. <laughs> It's a matter of strict spacer. Riker wrote a uh, wrote a paper that almost disqualified him. See, there's there's your ensign Gomez again. Yeah. And she found a comb. Yeah, shortly Look at that she hair. was transferred off the ship for dumping cocoa on the captain. <laughs> <laughs> now, poor extra. now, there's a there's a great scene here. Picard looks at her and does not acknowledge her at all. Yeah, he just gives her the. He remembered the Coco incident. Oh, you're here still we go. here? I mean, also why I relate to her is that I would probably also get fired for spilling hot cocoa. And Looks at her. He might as well be looking at a bag of flaming poo right there. How he's playing angry right now reminds me of a uh, a guy that I worked with who is very much on the spectrum. And he, you know, he kind of needed to have like a stance to show that he was upset. Oh, like to rehearse it? This yeah. is what I need to do. What's the name of that? Uh, what? that shuttle? What does it say there? Sakara. In the in the HD version, it's uh, Einstein. Huh. Oh. They changed the name of the shuttle in the HD version. Oh. See there, it says something else. Huh. Interesting. That is wow, interesting. I never noticed that before. Why would they? Why would they change something like that? Is there something about the original namesake that is controversial? I don't know. And they also, we can come on the lower shuttle bay, something you don't see on the show very often. Yeah. Well, it also makes me wonder if some guy named Sakura did the the HD, like... Get my name off of the... Of yeah. <laughs> well, this is not the HD version. This is the standard disc, right? This is the cheap Chinese knockoff? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Romboid Drongar? Zero zero six. That would have been a fun drinking game kind. too. Every time it said Romboy <laughs> Drunker. I know. Yeah, but actually, they, they get there. There is one thing you can do for me. There's just, just this guy that are chocolate off my ship. This guy that looks like a uh, like the crocodile hunter. I'm Romboy Drunker. <laughs> what can I do for you? That does sound like a really awesome adventure name. Okay, so it's opening credits, which means I read the things from the show notes. This is episode 17, season 2, Samaritan Snare, from which you will realize why it is called. Um, directed by Les Landu. Lando. We Written by Robert L. McCulloch. Oh my gosh. Our crappy musician does McCarthy. Boo. Bring out more Ron Jones. Dennis McCarthy's gonna guest star and say, yeah. Why do you hate me so much? You know, if that's what it takes to get him on the show, <laughs> maybe I should do that more often. <laughs> um, now, let's see here. While skirting laws about liable and slander, I want to move the topic onto <laughs> that this aired on May 15th, 1988. So I hope it's a beautiful mid May that you have excellent plans coming up in the summertime, and that you're enjoying your commute home listening to this podcast. 89, right? You said 88. 88? Oh Sorry. my gosh, 89. yes. 89. Uh, so anyway, la-di-da, moving on. We have a gaggle of guests. Um, we actually see... I'll bring them up as they come up, but we see some, uh, some previous background actors come in a second time. And, uh, well, look at that. The opening credits are over, so now I don't have to read my notes anymore. <laughs> Whew, that was a lot of work. Are there any Dexter <sighs> Clay in here? No Dexter Clay. No, he's, uh, he's gone now. Aww. I think he's off the show. Teaching okay. children to read. He was a big literacy guy. That's so cool. He was also on a, a council for the city of L.A. dealing with their homelessness crisis, too, yeah. I believe. There is every ship in the entire show right there. <laughs> 
the back of people's Basically, heads and the stars. Of no, they, they came across this ship that has a distress signal. Oh. And everything about these guys called the pet glids upset me. Look, now, take a look at the caricature here. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, they're, they're really, really pushing the line of this guy is the R word. Yeah. And I refuse to believe that a spacefaring society even got out of orbit acting like that. So I think they did they did a disservice to uh, playing on a stereotype. Well, they said it's sublight capable. Yeah. But to get out of orbit, oh, you need to math you need to and math. logic and communicate and work as a team. And these guys, these guys... It almost it's almost like they set them up that they can't even tie their own shoes. Yeah. Uh, I find the whole thing just really upsetting. Uh, well, do you think that in their race that they're that's considered intelligent? That's what data kind of implies that he's like they might not talk a lot. Yeah. Seriously, you really, talk- pro- really professional <laughs> commander. Yeah. Very well. Our chief engineer will beam over to help. They are looking for things. They're looking for. Eyebrow pluckers. Yeah. Commander, do we truly need to send our chief engineer over to do the... That's a great question, Worf. It, yeah. yeah. Do we need to send our chief engineer the, over? The, I don't the, think we do. Yeah, the one time, the one time job. Worf is right. Yeah. <laughs> Picard's not there to witness it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We do not know anything about this. Could you please put this in my supervisory file so when the captain comes back, we can do a, I was right. God, can you imagine Worf's uh, performance review? You know what, Mr. Worf? I did put it in there, and then I lost the file. Oh! You know what it was? Is that Sonia spilled hot chocolate on it. He was walking down the hallway. All he had was the paper copy. So could they, we just witnessed that conversation where Riker's like, no, they seem a little slow, and Data goes, well, they have limited language capabilities. Mm. So they started that conversation. Yes. I would agree with that. You know, there's other ways of being intelligent. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they establish in this episode is the, the pack lids equate people being strong to being smart. Uh, there's 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 an interesting there's an interesting dynamic there. So here is the road trip with your father that you never talked to. Um, Wesley brings up a really good conversation. He's basically going to say to Picard, "You really don't like me, do you?" Or well, more specifically, you don't like kids. This is more. It's more like the road trip with your mom's boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, there. Yep. Yeah, kind of. I mean. Beverly and Picard kind of had a thing. Yeah, it's like the the conversation is like, so you're dating my mom. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but, uh yeah, with my mom. Take it out of me every day, sir. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. Look what I'm wearing, sir. How could you say something like that? So this is cool. This is where Picard is starting to open up. Hey, I need. Heart surgery. Okay. Wesley had his really stupid question here in a minute. What else would it be? Why would they re why would they replace your perfectly good heart with a perfectly bad heart just to replace it with another perfectly good heart? Yeah, that is what he's gonna ask. Well no, but that's a le- that's a legitimate question. So you're in the future, say, right? Yeah. I mean, think of it like with false teeth, with dentures now, or, you know, like that. You I have a I have a thing where I, I can't grow enamel on my teeth. Right. So no matter how much I floss, brush, mouthwash, I will always get bad cavities. Right. It's just a fact. So it's one of those things where I've considered, especially with the advancements they've had now, at some point, is it better to just have your teeth pulled and replaced with, you know, veneer ones that will last as opposed to constantly spending money to have them repaired? Yeah. And go through the pain of that where you just have them replaced. Same thing with a heart, all right? So, you, you know, you're getting older... You're, you know, humans, your heart came out. At what point do you just decide for certain organs, like your liver or something? Do I just get a, do I just get a, why not just get an artificial one? If it'll be more efficient. And, you know, you, you know, I mean, that's possibly, you know, like having some of your, 
parts of your arteries replaced, so you know they're just, mm-hmm. that they can't get clogged. Yeah, I would agree with that. So it's, you know, at the level of technology that they're at now, and, and, and in, this, in Star Trek, there'd probably be a lot of people who, if given the option, would maybe... But yeah, what Wesley asked him, which is the, what the dumb question was, was why would they give you a faulty heart? Which they didn't purposely give him a faulty heart. They gave it to him and it happened to be faulty. Well, Wesley, when you buy things off uh, AliExpress, you know, sometimes you don't quite get the American version. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, what time I bought 80 pounds of Batman comics? Yeah. 80 pounds. Wait, this is two episodes in a row now where Troy wasn't on the bridge. Detected a problem, ran up to the bridge, saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, yeah, like, What's going on? This is yeah. what happens when you don't report for duty, Deanna. You're the last to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, she shouldn't be though. She's a counselor. She should know these things. But, but so she's so she's down there in 1040 eating her chocolate sundae. Like something's wrong. It's not this chocolate. Oh God! There's a ship out there. <laughs> so she, she goes says, up there. in great danger. You need Worf to go. Hold it. <laughs> or, or even, or even better." She says that, and Riker just whips around, looks at Worf, he's like, Did you tell? <laughs> yeah, and in the previous episode, Q, who, uh, um, it was Deanna that called, Hey, Captain, something's up with the captain, and they say, This guy is missing, stop the ship. Um, okay, so that was the equivalent of Worf saying, Called it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> the yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all Worf can do is he's good at looking annoyed. <laughs> Uh, I he's would, got a lot to be annoyed he, about. He's got, he's got to give that thing like, oh, what's his name from Kirby Enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. We just gives that look of the... <laughs> mm-hmm. So here we see this flashing light, and that would just drive me nuts. Because you're in this car ride, and you've got this light just flashing in your face. Blink, blink. Those are pretty good lights. Blink. Just not overly thrilled prospect of having my inlets become the subject of Starfleet gossip. So here's the question. Why is Picard sharing all this with Wesley? It's, it, he feels guilty. Why didn't you just have Dr. Pulaski before? You know, because he, 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 as you know, I don't know if they've covered it yet, but he, he's basically, his dad died under his command. Yeah, right. we talked Follow, about that yeah, on the podcast. Following his orders. Mm-hmm. So it's basically like coming back and seeing the son of a soldier you led in the battle, and it's he, it's like he almost promised himself he'd take that, he'd look after the kid when he found out where he was going to be on the ship. But then now he's realizing, you know what? I've always kept him at arm's length, kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll smile at his mom, but I shoved him in the closet. And <laughs> made him listen to a podcast while we were hanging out. Oh, boy. So what you call this the A plot or the B plot? Do you think that... This the, is the A plot. The A plot, and then the thing with Picard would be the B plot. Yes. But honestly, the thing with... When you look at the arc of the show, the B plot's way more fascinating. I'm, yeah. 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 That's what I'm more fascinated about. You know, they could have done better with these guys if they made them like the Volgons from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. The big, dumb, green guys who yeah. grew up really bad poetry mm-hmm. and just wanted to build hyperspace uh, bypasses. And, you know, they weren't dumb. They were just brutish and angry and cut their social skills were terrible, but they knew how to run their ship. These guys, they give you the impression, who let you on the ship and how did you learn to fly it? And there it goes. The, the, the ship is broken down just a little bit more. Well, our ship going now. Your guidance is operational, but you're not going anywhere. Not with me. She tried turning it on and then turn it, turn it off, and turning it back on again. Can you make it go? So in this episode, Jordy's using some great soft skills with them. Oh yeah, he's polite. In fact, he's very reading oh, Rainbow you. right here. Yeah. Mm. He he's not mocking them, kind of like which what Riker was doing. Mm. You could make the argument he'd be be, be a better first officer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah, wasn't that in the Arsenal of Freedom you made that case? Yep, he was the what he commanded the ship. And it's like, yeah, Deanna Troy would never have dared to tell Riker, like, you know what? The crew's uncomfortable around you. And he, he just, yeah, he's like, we've had this conversation before. A, I can't help it. B, I don't care. Yeah. So it, what's important here is Wesley's addressing the issue and is finally making Picard realize that he's uncomfortable around him. Not Wesley, but Picard. Say that, sir. It's pretty obvious how you feel. 
Well, it's true because Picard's been a dick on the bridge a lot of times. You don't like kids. Yeah. And that was a really safe way of him saying, you don't like me. Oh, and he's shaming him. You could have met my daddy if you just liked kids. Yeah, if you hadn't killed my daddy. (laughs) Wait a minute. That, that's yeah. the only way he could have become This conversation is over. <laughs> he basically is like, the subject is closed. Yeah. He literally it's like, makes you see ten yeah. times more awkward. Yeah. You see Picard <laughs> like, now, do, like a, do like a tap, tap, tap with his index finger and immediately, with his index finger and immediately on Wesley's screen it says, if you have an artificial heart, intercourse is not recommended. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. He just shut that conversation down. Moved to the back cabin. Said we'll everything's ready. fine. You see him slowly pull a curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While staring at him. Yeah, just... <laughs> Thank you, Wesley. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so now they're trying to get the ship fixed. Apparently your ship is in need of more than minor repair. Now I do like the concept of the pack lead. Not that they're doofuses. But they're kind of like the Ferengi, where they buy and sell. They try to collect technology where they, wherever they can. If you look at Canon, uh, Ferengi purchased warp drive from I think was it the Klingons or was it from? I didn't say who, but I guess. But they got it from somebody. Uh, but so, the thing is, it's like a. The Ferengi would have just said that they wanted Jordy, and b. They've dealt with humans long enough to understand that you don't ask to buy. Other people. humans from humans. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's a good jump take. Yep. So they basically played the stupid part to steal his weapon and... What the hell does negative response mean? Uh, it, it, not there's no response. No, when they're trying to beam him back. Oh. They say negative response. I'm like, what is that? What, what, are there uh, shields up? Are there, is I'm there sorry. Or was it? I'm sorry, Commander, that's just what the terminal is flashing. I mean, yeah, I was like, is O'Brien polishing his console and not able to hit the button? <laughs> so, they're turning around. They're repositioning. Looks like they're squaring off for a fight. They've raised shields. They shot Jordy. Apparently so. I, I love I love Data's uh, affirmations there. They're ignoring us. Apparently so. Yeah. They're treating us like jerks. Yes, they are. Yeah. Like, I don't I like when people aren't that. paying attention to me, Commander. Yeah. That's correct. I know. This how I know, jerk. sir. <laughs> more more <laughs> accurately, they're ignoring you, sir. Is, yeah. You're in command, and the rest of us haven't done anything rude to them yet. I don't think so, sir. So he's trying to play the, you know, the the dad card. Yeah. It's like, look, see here, I don't hate kids. Yes. I'm trying I to feed you. I'm you trying some... to give you coffee. And, and he's got the crust cut off the sandwich. Aww. Yes. <laughs> and these tea sandwiches. Remember, this is the most British Frenchman you'll ever meet. Including the language he uses in telling the story. He calls the bar that they go to dead rough. And he refers to the, his friends as his mates. Wow. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's literally the most British person. Well, according to the autobiography of Picard in World War III, the British uh, took over a part of France and was uh, uh, cultured for quite some time. It would be hilarious as if during that whole Packlet thing they were like sending messages to the ship making fun of Riker that uh, what's it Worf and uh, Data were reading and then discarding <laughs> just Riker's not passing flip. it on yeah. or, or that because they intimidate yeah. strength yeah. the next time you see the Packlets one of them's wearing a really crudely made fake beard mm-hmm. he's like look I am in command now this You've is always been so <laughs> you see Riker do his um, like end of the thing briefing us like I noticed we got a bunch of transmissions from the ship what did they say and they're like not important sir no let me see oh here we go commander Riker is an idiot hey (laughs) so there's a there's a side (laughs) joke going on over here on the other side of the room and I kind of want to see what it's all about oh I was just giggling because they're talking and Wesley goes where women are concerned I am in complete control no Wesley you are not in control yeah I saw how you were with when you were the dolphin yeah Yeah. there's no you are not in control 
Matter but of perspective. He's he's pulling it off. I mean, he knows how not to answer his calm. <laughs> so there you go. That's control. Was this before the Klingons joined the Federation? It's just he's trying to have a one up on Picard by right. saying, you know, this oh, is what I have that you don't have. Bonsdale mm-hmm. Recreation Facility. Ooh. Nah. Bonsdale. Bonsdale. We had three shuffleboards back then. Two of them were always broken, so we had to arm yeah, wrestle on the again. Lakewood of the Federation. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. Oh. Wow, I'm so glad that most people don't live in the Tacoma <laughs> area and know what right we're talking there. about. Whew. We no way consider this locker room talk. Yes. Not even. Not even? No. Well, he's not talking about He's not... Being like sexually inappropriate. He's just yeah, oh, oh, no, but it gets better because Picard's talking about what a jerk he was. And so he's at this recreation center. So he's at the roller skating rink of, of the bad side of town with his academy buddies where these big scary Nausicans come up. And he starts telling them how much he hates their planet, how much he hates their species, and challenges their questionable parentage. He even says that. He, he makes a couple of your mama jokes, basically. Oh, no. yeah, still, in, still in the 24th century, racism is how you look big in front of your friends. One of his chums threw his weapon at Oh, one of his chums. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. How much pain? Shock. Certainly at the sight of a classic scene in what was that episode called? Tapestry. Tapestry. Yeah. And ironically enough, d- different because he's downplaying the involvement of his friends in this yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know that Picard can be an unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. He just he kind of just tells the story to get the point across. He doesn't always share all the information. Wesley, I was an OG. <laughs> I was no what? I was no hero, Wesley. I was being racist to a couple local kids, and they killed me for it. And only because I was near a hospital was I able to get my ass saved. Yeah. So, takeaway from here is: if you're going to be a racist, do it in the ER parking lot. <laughs> this is why we're training you to drive the biggest starship in the fleet. Yes, <laughs> and you can drive my. <laughs> To the nearest star base as quickly as possible. <laughs> That's terrible. I feel really bad for Wesley now. He's even more of a I know. <laughs> Dear... Is that why you keep asking what my blood type is? Yeah. I'm just keeping you around for the blood, son. <laughs> Dear Mom, Captain Picard made me feel ways about things I've never felt before. Wesley, I've been waiting to get this email from you. So Wes, uh, not Wesley, LaForge LaForge has kind of come to from being shot. They're asking him to make more weapons. Are 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 we talking hand weapons here or like larger ship? No, what he's got. They're going to replicate his phasers. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty handy. If you had a phaser right now, you could start some shit. Yeah. I mean, you could go Rick and Morty on just about everybody with one of those. Agreed. But what do the Packards want? Counselor? No, they don't want her. They have what they want. For now. Well, they want Jordy. Yeah, I'd be more if I'd be like, if only Jordy had gone over there with some sort of security detachment or... Why did he bring a weapon? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, that's the thing. He's not concerned, but I'm going to bring a gun with me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's standard precaution. So you think that then they would have put biometrics into these? So you, if your phaser is taken from you, nobody else can fire it but you. Yeah. They've already got guns that can do that. That's reassuring. Yeah, I agree. It's very reassuring. I have much time. No greater challenge than the study of philosophy. Look what it turned you into. Now that's actually a really good contrast for Wesley. Right now, in this moment, Wesley is the Academy kid. He's being what everybody else wants him to be. But he has no idea who he wants to be as an individual. He doesn't have time. 
Um, and that's where I'm really glad that the traveler comes by a second a second time and just kind of awakens his mind. That, so that we don't see that until much much longer when we introduce the the uh, the Cardassian join conflict with the DMZ. As is their power generator. And what was Geordi repairing? Apparently, the punitive malfunctions were carefully programmed into their ship's computer. I didn't think the Packlers had that kind of technology. They seem to have made some technological leaps forward, Commander. Why would they go through the charade of getting on out? How about, why didn't you figure this out before you sent the engineer over there? Worf's up there. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, between the HD version and this version, in the HD version, they redid this map painting and added a few very organic, twisty-like looking buildings. Yes. Also, that's one of my favorite map paintings, but they use it for almost every city scene in the show. Yeah, that's very much the same planet that the matriarchy was on. Mm -hmm. And the one where uh, Riker gets captured by aliens and he has to have sex with the nurse to escape. Yeah. This oh, poor, poor Riker. Yeah. <laughs> Sex with a nurse. I don't know. Yeah. She <laughs> would. But then he gets beat up by a gang like ten That's minutes later. Is. So, you know. What's yeah, the... but you know, as he's losing consciousness and they're pummeling him, he's going worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, groan. They are initiating visual contact, sir. Maybe that will find out what they really want. We have your guy. We're going to keep him. No. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> Shoot him again. Jeez. I know. That's just... <laughs> really? That's Stop the... it. Who's more intelligent? Who shoots him again? again. <laughs> Throw, throwing a temper tantrum. I mean, if anything, the Packlids are more emotionally intelligent yeah. than Riker right now. Um, yeah, they just did. They fooled you, sucker. Yeah, yeah they are smart. Um, <laughs> who has a kidnapped officer? Who from where? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, he's he's engineer from the flagship. He's number one. He's just the way that he's acting is just very uncaptain like. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> no, yes, damn it! Like what? <laughs> I always thought that. Riker could have been like that a tactical officer who just got on the wrong career track. Huh. If anything, Worf would have been a better commander in this situation. Well, developed Worf, not developed Worf. Yes, not not Worf as we stand right now. Again, I would have put if you were to put if you were to elevate somebody, I would have put Jordy up there. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I wonder if that was ever a conversation in the writers room. Yeah. Well, as far as diplomacy, how important is that in a leader? Like, what do they see in Riker that they're oh. that he's further up the chain of command? Well, well, Jordy's got the diplomacy down. He goes, whoa, 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 well, yeah, stop! Yeah, what that's are you what I'm doing? Saying, is yeah. that Jordy yeah. has a lot of diplomacy. Riker doesn't seem to. And so Riker just demands shit. It's yeah. you know what? What do they see as leadership qualities that? that Riker is further up. This, so did you see the size of that heart? It was like the size of a quart bottle. Well, it's because it's in water. Yeah. I love that he went in there and they're like, would you like to have a red hat like we have? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I would. I Nurse, red cat, this man. <laughs> I think I'd rather have a blue one. And excision of the early model Students or nurses, you think? Students. Yeah. Because he's explaining. Are we the students? <gasps> Is this breaking the fourth wall theater? Oh my gosh, I should be taking notes. Okay, he's getting, what? what is that called? That device he just got for? Tissue the, mitigator. The, the yeah, tissue so he doesn't mitigator. want Pulaski to do it privately on the ship, but he's letting a bunch of medical students look at them yeah, cut into the... a teaching the hospital. Oh, that's Picard I want to watch. It's, it reminds me of that Deep Space Nine episode where Bashir does surgery in Avorda and all the Gem Hadar want to stand up and take a look because they've never seen the inside of a Avorda before. I want to see what a captain looks like on the inside. Ian McKellen like hops up from under the table. <laughs> Were you under there the whole time? <laughs> yes. The whole time. Oh, man. Perhaps Jordy should give them something they want. This is a 
like the conference that doesn't really go anywhere. Would you be suggesting a ruse of some sort? I was pretty, I thought pretty that was obvious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. And actually, <laughs> Deanna, it's pronounced Roos. Roos? Roos. It's not. I'm not <laughs> just saying that that's well, I wouldn't know. kind of how he talks to her. I can read the writing, but I can't write the reading. We'll need sharper focus on the thoracic polychromatics and verification of myocardial enzymes. These are, this is um, the tool they're using to do this with. Come on. <laughs> it's like they, they, they got medical, the... Medical, medical, medical. It's like Mad Libs. <laughs> right. Hey. Insert medical term here. Let me talk. I'll give you the computer bits. We want to be smart. So open the hailing frequency. Now, listen. now he's showing disrespect to them. Yeah. You just got shot twice. Yeah. yeah. We need their computer things. Yes. <laughs> their computer things. Yes. I want to tell you, they've got sound, st- sound, strat- right. sound strategy. Poor li- linguist. Ligu- I can't even linguistics. say it. Linguistic skills. How about it? Jordy's like, the most not smart thing in the universe is a goober. And I'm pretty sure my commander thinks you're a goober right now. <laughs> you don't want him to think you're a goober, do you? <laughs> Where did they get their shields? Yes, we like shields. Yeah, we heard that from Captain like America, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Those are shields. So, uh, Christopher Collins. Steal something from the Romulans or the Klingons. <laughs> they left it lying around. Like, it's like fifth generation, it's like, you know, first generation of something, they're like on the 10th or 11th generation of it, they just ran in and took it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like a little kid running out of a grocery store with a candy bar. So the individual packlets in Samaritan Snare were named after the surnames of the person who pitched the episode and his best friend, Reginald and Gerbinald, uh, Gerbinald, uh, I can't even say it. I even tried to say it earlier. G E R B N E D L O G. Gerblog and Donger and Goldberg uh, spelled backwards. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And I guess you'll just have to arm your photon torpedoes without me. As well as our hydrogen collectors. Oh, Dana. Bond farewell. He knows about weapons. Data's a good bluff. Yeah. When you ask Data to bluff, I am, I am fascinated, for I did not realize there was hydrogen in space. Right? You will die without honor. It's a lot more. You will never attain the 24th level of awareness. 24? Well, that's uh, it's quite a challenge. Indeed. 24 is the gateway to heroic salvation. <laughs> Hint, 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 24. I have 24 spots on my shirt. Along with 24. All of a sudden, what's the name of that guy from the show, 24? What's what's that Jack character? Is it? Yeah, I see Jack Bear running across the bridge. We don't have much time. This would have been right, right after uh, Stand By Me, which was his big movie at the time. Yeah. Well, Wesley, too. Yep, I forgot about that. Were they both in the same movie? Yeah. What did Jack Bauer do? He was the the bully. No. Yeah. They're not that close in age, are they? Yeah. Well, he's a little bit older than him, but yeah, he was was the bully. My mind is blown. Something's wrong. The metabolation occlusions aren't holding. My metabolation is what? Damn it. I can't stop the heterocyclic declination. It looks like you tried very hard. You know, Jim, this is where I understand okay. your annoyance. This is, a, this, is a, this is apparently a three vibrator problem. <laughs> three vibrator. Three vibrator problem. Yeah. Maybe we need a fourth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if this ship had a thousand and one holes, it wouldn't have sunk. Yeah. <laughs> Futurama reference there. So anyway, Christopher Collins is one of the pack lids. He was a uh, standing Klingon not too long ago. Um, to be kidding. The surgeon there, that's Daniel Benaz- uh, Benzali, does a lot of theater and TV and film work. And uh, he was in the movie of 
If you two we kill. Like power. Yeah. Not try to trick us. You can tell. And the guy they bring in at the epi- at the end of the episode, his name is uh, uh, Tzi Ma. T Z I M A. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Well, guess what? He's been in a lot of TV, from Cocaine Cowboys to Golden Gate to Dante's Peak, Rush Hour, Catfish and the Black Bean Sauce. What was he in Rush Hour? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Well, you got to understand that not all TV was made in the United States. So um, he was in Mulan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was there, the character of... Get a good look. This is the last time you're going to see Ensign Gomez. Oh, goodbye, Ensign Gomez. We'll see you on Mars. Ongoing scanning indicates progressive weapons potential. The timing will be crucial. Jordy must correctly interpret our intentions. After failing her Starfleet career, she yeah. ended up on the streets of Mars looking for an easy buck. Ongoing scanning? Couldn't you have figured this out before you sent Jordy over here? Let's see, so uh, Lysia, am I saying her name right? Yeah. Lysia, uh, 56 years old from Las Vegas right now. She's a journalist. Oh. She was also a dancer and an act- uh, actress. She was in a lot of TV in the 80s, in the 90s. Yeah, she looks super familiar. Yep. She was in Baywatch. <laughs> Da-da. Da-da. You have I think everyone was in Baywatch. Not me. <laughs> she was in The Flash. Nice. Which one did? The original Flash? Television film pilot. Nice. Positive indication of armed photon She's a supporting character. Yeah. Starbase request we proceed to base at warp 9. Wait, what? Yes, the captain needs our help. But they don't know what for. Come to Starbase, get the captain, don't ask any questions. Wait, is Flosky in the captain's chair? No. 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 She's in the Riker's chair. Why is the seat sticky? It smells like Scotch Guard. <laughs> and there are footprints all over this console. What have you been doing? Uh, <laughs> you want power? Here's power. Riker to Winston Gomez. Oh wait, no, she's got another scene. Look at that. I remember you said that number before. It means something. So what's un- also unbelievable is that s- smarter, stupid, most people's bullshit indicator is spot on. Yeah. And so for LaForge just to say, Oh my gosh, they're trying to kill me? Oh well it's on. I'm gonna I'm gonna make your ship go, I'm gonna give it a weapon, and we're gonna get them good. I mean that's just like eh. Eh. It's so weak. Don't do anything yet. What are you doing? Make sure your systems are operating. We will attack. We are strong. Nine. Eight. Riveting. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, give your best smoldering stare. This this is like the New Year countdown. That's what Riker thinks makes him a commander, is the smoldering stare, apparently. <laughs> Look at all that hydrogen. And for some reason... We have fired. They will be destroyed. They use their crimson force field. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Oh, darn. <laughs> Crimson <laughs> Force Field. Crimson Force Field. Wait, you're the engineer. Why didn't you think of the Crimson Force Field? Right about now, I would have been... If I was one of those pack leads, I just would have shot Jordy. He's like, ah, okay, well, we're leaving now. Pretty much. Thanks for nothing, buddy. What? That doesn't give them any kind of a tactical advantage. They don't have one now anyway. They, they just let them walk away. Are you okay? Yeah, I was shot a couple of times, but I'm okay. Blowing that hydrogen exhaust through the sun lane to show from a nice light show. Harmless but effective. Are you able to disable the photon? Just in time. That's why you're still here. Dun dun dun. But you don't have to take my word for 
And then that's it. And then yeah. And then, and then the pathlets are just never yep. seen again. No, yeah. I guess they do have another episode. Yeah. They they talk about him, and we see him in Deep Space Nine like once or twice walking around. But well, Matt was saying that they have an episode with the when Lore comes back, he's working with the pathlets. He was well, rescued by a pathlet ship, but it, right. it was just brought up. It wasn't actually directly referred. Like they just said, no, they Lore should... said, "Good thing I found a couple of." Pack lids to help me out. Well, no, uh, no. They, uh, uh, Dr. Sutton says, we didn't know you were live. And Dana says, yes, you were. How did you get, you know, sur- you know, get picked up in the middle of floating through space? And he's like, a couple of pack lids came across me. He's even wearing their costume. Right? Quite common. So, rubber gloves in the future? Well, he's wearing a surgical hat. <laughs> yeah. And why red? That's a nice pillow. Why is there a silk pillow in the operating room? He specially requested it. I, yeah. <laughs> well, they wear those same scrubs all the way through uh, Deep Space Nine. They do. You know, she does, she does have a kind look there. Not quite the jerk doctor we make her out to be. Yeah. Well, she's just performed surgery on him. I'm coming around to her. Like, I don't dislike her as much. I yeah. still dislike her. Well, she's a complex character. Yeah. Look, the captain's back. Why are you clapping? And standing. Stop it. You're clapping for Wesley. Oh, if this was for Wesley, sir, not you. You yeah. just happened to get off the elevator with him. Ensign Crush's Starfleet exam results permit him to continue his studies on board the Enterprise. Would have been an enormous distraction to have him at the Academy talking about how great the Enterprise is all the time. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, thanks, Wrecker. We're, we're already enlisted. You, you don't have to recruit us again. Engage. Well, the episode just finished. Yep. It, it fizzled. It didn't sizzle. Kind of went off. Understanded. Well, what happened? Um, <laughs> so, what happened? So, just 40 minutes ago, we started this. Captain needed heart surgery. Wesley needed to take a test, to the point where he had to leave the ship to take a test. We all assumed it was space herpes, and they just carpooled in the same shuttlecraft. And next thing we know, while they're going in the shuttlecraft, some morons in a space RV needed help. Kidnapped the chief officer, chief engineer. It was, they were so bad at their jobs, Worf was right. Uh, that's pretty upsetting. Yeah. Um, and then they played stupid and insulted the stereotype of cognitively challenged people. Lost. Shrugged their shoulders says, Oh, here's your engineer back. Sorry. Oh, by the way, that heart surgery thing was really about heart surgery, not space herpes. <laughs> so they went back, fixed the captain, and were happy... That Wesley gets to stay on the ship. Captain has a new heart. Everything's back to normal. That's exactly how I feel. It's just... (laughs) I am... I am just... What happened? Now... (laughs) Can we get those 40 minutes of our life back? Yeah. (laughs) No. Only if you listen to this episode on Uh, our podcast. Do you think Riker, like, hunkered down with the crew and was like, let's describe what happened to the Packlands in this certain way that makes me look really yeah. good. Yes. Let's look at our story straight, so. Well, first, sir, we're going to talk about a ruse. Yeah. You fooled them. They did not fool you. Or, yeah, it's ruse. Or, or what, ruse. It was, what it was is Picard's walking off the turbo like, no, what the hell happened? And Riker just starts clapping real loud yeah. to everybody else. <laughs> Get your story straight, people. Just like we rehearsed. If we clap real loud, he won't ask what's going on. <laughs> And then Watch Picard just happens to say to Jordy, How you doing, Jordy? Well, sir, I was shot twice. And Riker's like, No, no, no. Yeah. no. You took two shots at 10 forward with gun. Uh, no, remember that Gomez? <laughs> yeah, she spilled coffee and burned uh, chew. Yeah, they got that. Oh, well, get her off my ship. That was her last chance. You missed nothing. Oh, wow. So, boy, scoring wise. Out of red caps, red surgical caps. Red surgical caps. Okay. Give it a one. I mean, I love the backstory. It really initiated yet another great story arc 
for Picard. I mean, there was some great vague material for the writers to fill in later. Uh, Wesley stood up for himself, but while still being the goody two shoes, but one out of five. I just, it was fun, but yeah. not memorable. Okay. I've, I've seen a lot of memes about this episode, but I'll give it two just because there are worse episodes of Next Generation than this episode. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, two. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what say you, Nigel? Uh, I would also give it one surgical cap. Yeah, the pilot thing, even for the eighties, that was kind of an offensive portrayal, and. I did, I did really like the very middle of this episode where Picard opens up and tells the story about their official heart because I've seen Tapestry as one of my favorite episodes mm-hmm. and without spoiling too much it's a variation but the fact that he would tell Wesley this particular story and take all the blame himself is a really good character defining moment for him mm-hmm. I almost think they should have switched the B plot and the A plot and just had the heart surgery be the center piece and then expand that a little more talk a little more about Wesley and Picard so in that regard, that's the only reason it gets a surgical cap. Otherwise, it'd be a zero because it was. It really you could take this out episode out if and nothing really would change. So one out one out of five caps. One out of five caps, and I'm being generous. One thing that we did miss, Picard was vulnerable, and had a teaching moment with Wesley. Yes. And that's big. He cut the crusts off the sandwiches. <laughs> yes. yes. Just like a good father should. Yep. What if he had said to him, what if Picard had said to Wesley, hey, when I get out of surgery, let's have let's have dinner together. And instead of the surgeon, you know, calling the ship, Wesley goes to dinner and Picard's not there and he runs into one of the, the surgical students and they say, like, something's going really wrong. And oh. Wesley has to get back in touch with the ship and then Riker pulls a hole like, don't exaggerate, Ensign. Like, you don't tell the Enterprise where and when to go. And... <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I, I think because he Riker likes Wesley so much. Yeah. You're like, you're like oh, sorry, Jordy, you're on your own. We're going. Wesley asked us to come over here. What if Riker was jealous of Wesley? I don't think he's jealous of Wesley. He doesn't like Picard. I think he likes Wesley is because yeah. we, I think he oh, likes Wesley yeah. because he's literally his sidekick. Yeah. He's his 1960s Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so many surgical caps, Steve. I'll give it a one. It was an atrocious episode. Other than the Picard thing, you what? could have easily replaced the Packers with the Ferengi. And then instead of making them, you know, slow, you could just have them, or just any alien, to do just be like, hey man, we don't know what's wrong with our ship. We got fake smoke coming out of these consoles. Can you send somebody over? Mm-hmm. You could have done, if you really wanted to do something still misogynistic, had a ship full of really beautiful women who are asking for help or something like that. Yeah, and then Riker would have gone over and not Jordy. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and then you would have had Riker and Jordy like, well, I can fix things, Riker. He's like, really? Says the guy who asked me to fix his, you know, whatever like that. And then, yeah, and it is. Or what about those Miami Vice drug alien farmer hick people <laughs> oh. yeah, from that, season you, one? You could have picked any reason why. <laughs> yeah. And, because the Enterprise, you know, Federation ships are known to render assistance. So you just have anybody say, you know, if they just come up and say, yeah, man, we blew out our Ford Manifold Johnson Rod something or other. And Johnson. I don't know, just something like that. You didn't need the, you, you didn't need this whole alien race that, that that sounds like they're slow. That was, yeah, like, it was just stupid and didn't add anything to the plot. We're writers and we make this episode go. A better version of this, what they'll do is that later episode they did, uh, uh, the booby trap. Yeah, yeah that, that was a good episode. That one actually made sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could have easily adapted that plot to this. Jim, what do you have? I would also give it a uh, one out of five. <laughs> and I think I would pretty much copy and paste exactly what Nigel said, where the A and the B plot should have been switched. Yeah. And that... The only thing that gets any kind of rating from me and saves it from being a zero is the whole Picard Wesley thing. And I'm very much really starting to like all of the Wesley episodes. Like those, yeah. have, those are quickly becoming my favorite episodes, and a lot of people don't like Wesley, but I like Wesley episodes. Go with Sasha to Comic Con. No. And you can meet him and he'll sign pretty much anything you put well, in front I, of him. I do like Will Wheaton. Will Just Wheaton. in general. Yeah. Like he seems like a good guy, but I'm not going to Comic Con. So now that you put the cat out of the bag, I will be posting photos of me dressed up as Syndrome from The Incredibles on our page. Uh, it's not really re- related to Star Trek, but uh, it's fun. So, 
Uh, what we're basically saying is a panel here between the five of us in the room. Well, Pat hasn't given his rating. Yet. I did. It's two. Oh, yeah. sorry. I think we all gave it a one out of five. But, but we, <laughs> but we all agreed that the awkward road trip with the possible future daddy, yeah, was the highlight of this episode. Yeah. 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 Yeah, How that, interesting yeah, is it? It was basically they were in their <laughs> Ford Focus of the, of the future, <laughs> driving down the highway. It was like a very boring version of Little Miss Sunshine. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Well, there you have it. You've wasted another 50 <laughs> minutes, one hour with us here on Next Generation's First Generation. Couldn't get enough podcasts? Why not listen to... Star Trek Monthly Mondays with uh, Scott Gardner and Chris Honeywell, or Mark's Mess with Mark Adams and his two daughters, Catherine and Charlotte. Or is it Charlotte and Catherine? Is one of them gonna dress up as Catherine Jaylee? I doubt that very much. Okay. I don't think they're I don't think they're Star Trek kids. They're uh, they're Doctor Who kids right now. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Or one of them is. All right. Cool. Well, there we have it, and I'd like to just say have. A wonderful day! Next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. A rescue mission uncovers a colony of clones facing extinction. I was hoping that you would be willing to share some tissue samples. You want to clone us? And to keep their race alive, they're conducting secret breeding experiments on the crew. We're desperate. And that gave you the right to assault us, to rob us, and we have the rights to survive! On Star Trek The Next Generation. So you're the guest. So Sasha, what is so, Star Trek The I, Next Generation? I am the guest. So Sasha, what is Star Trek The Next Generation? Seek us out at Next Generation's First Generation at iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. Music credits include Electric Car by Poddington Bear. Anything for Love by Daniel Birch. Kyrena Dreams by Necrotage. Nebuchadnezzar Dream of Four Kingdoms by OLM. Snake Attack Dub by Fojian Roots. Audio Engineering by Sasha Shouties. Chief Meme Maker and episode cover credit goes to Matthew Kirshner. Logo and graphic art design credit goes to David Clawwitter. And special thanks to Patrick Delmore for working with other podcasts to make sure the good word gets out. Do you have a podcast that you think people should be listening to? Send us your promos and we'll play them on the show. If you'd like to email the show, you can email us at nextgenfirstgenpod at gmail.com. I've been Patrick Delmore. And this is Sasha Shouties. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Good night. Thank you.